hi good morning everyone let's get started with our next training topic which is on performing export for an OSDB migration for an ABAP based system okay so in the previous session we have seen how to do an export preparation and why export preparation is required so basically to find out the size of the remote database that we need to build and to get the DDL that is the statement for creating the database structure database tables and database schema in the remote system we do the export preparation export preparation is something which can be done repeatedly and the main benefits we have seen is for creating the structure for the database finding out the size of the database that we need to cater for in the target system and the table structure that we require okay so another thing that we can find out from the export preparation is the splitting of tables we can identify which are the largest tables and we need to split those tables and that is one another key thing in the export preparation okay that is the splitting of tables we'll be covering that in the separate training session as well but just for the information that table splitting will help to split very large tables into smaller tables which can be easily exported okay so let's get into the ex actual export so for exporting we will do the use the same SAP INST tool which is for the older versions of SAP system export and for the newer versions we use SWPM that is software provisioning tool okay so we have an option to stop the SAP right at the time we are performing an export or what we can do is we can come to a stage and after we are at, at that particular stage we can manually stop the SAP system so database has to be keep running but SAP system can be stopped during the export process because it speeds up the export okay there is an option to perform the export while the SAP system is running but that is not recommended you may use that system for your dev and QA export but overall that system that particular process is not recommended so the recommended process is that make sure that your database is up and running and your SAP system is stopped when you are performing an exp export okay so basically we just need to make sure that the time that is required for performing the export is very important because your system will be down for that but that much time say for example if you have a say 32 gig system and 32 gig memory and you have say 600 gig of database it may take up to 12 to 24 hours for performing just the export so there are ways to optimize that because your system will be down for that much of time you can bring down the export time from say 16 to from 16 hours or 24 hours to 6 to 8 hours so th there are parameters which can be set to tune that so it's extremely important that we do a tuning of the export parameters so that we have an optimal downtime and we have lesser business impact okay, especially if you have a very large system that plays even a bigger role because the export will take a lot of time and they may not be luxury of performing export with suboptimal parameters because it will take a lot of time to perform the export okay here are some of the parameters like pg aggregate target say these are some of the example parameters for an oracle based export okay same thing similar parameters we can have depending on what type of your source database system is okay so just make sure that you find out what is the current value what is the new value and make a change of the parameter before you start the export okay so now let's get into the export screen let's go to the particular location and start the export using SAP INST tool okay in SAP INST tool here you can see that 
this is one of the mandatory step so here basically once you are in SAP INST just make sure that you come to the SAP depending on what system you are exporting so you go to that particular system product go to the software lifecycle options go to system copy database so system export central system and depending on whether it is an AS ABAP or AS Java or AS ABAP plus Java select the relevant option okay in this particular case what we are selecting is did database and central instance export okay this is here you can see the description of this which basically says that this is one of the mandatory step for a system copy procedure and the following activities are performed during this particular operation so first thing is it creates the export directory structure with label files and source system information if required so that is very important that is the export directory structure is created okay next is creating the database structure files there are str files which are created for ABAP database objects okay then is updating database statistics because depending on the database platform and the selected dialog option okay another step is we need to calculate the size of the target database based on the size of, of this file dbsize.xml okay and once that part is done we need to export the actual content of the ABAP source and then if it is a dual stack system or if it is having Java stack we just do the archive the SDM software deployment manager component and then we archive the application specific file system information so this is basically for a dual stack system okay now when we click on next it will take us to the profile folder we have we have all the three profile that is instance profile default profile and system profile so we just give the location where the profile folder is there and it will pick up the relevant information for performing an export okay about the system information about which is the user with which SAP is running and we just provide the authentication information at the OS level for performing an export okay here you can see that for the export it is asking one important question that is which is the method you want to use do you want to use the database specific tool or you want to use this system copy method okay so here it's we need to provide that information but it is recommended not to use the database specific tool because SAP has its own structure and format for creating an export dump and it is recommended to use that particular format so that format can be imported into a, any of the target databases okay now we specify the export location and here you can see that this is one tab called export the running system export the running system what it means is that at this stage it will ask for confirmation that okay stop the system okay and when you just click on enter it will take you to the next phase okay now here as we have seen in the preparation phase as well this is basically the SMIGR create DLL okay it will ask for the confirmation have you run this okay if you have run this where are your SQL file directory where are your files for the SMIGR create DLL okay so just make sure that you provide files you provide the files where you have the SQL file dot LST and the relevant SQL files which is pointed out by this particular file okay how do we run this as we have seen is that we need to go to AC38 and run this program SMIGR underscore create DLL okay now in the next step basically here we are providing the main information about the source database specific things like the database ID that is the SID for the source system database host that is host name of the source system source DB that is what is the database type of the source system is it Oracle or whatever is the source database then the OS for the source database is also important 
Okay, then in the target system, we need to provide the database type, that is the type of the database. Okay, and here there is another key option, just take note that using start migration mo monitor manually. So this is one advanced technique of performing OSDB migration. We will see that shortly in our subsequent trainings also. Okay, now in this, basically we are talking about the split the str file. The, so the database structure files, we if the files is very big, we just need to split it. But here we are specifying the criteria for splitting. That is the Java splitting tool, what it will do is it will find out the largest tables, put the largest table in separate packages. So take note that once it is listed down the large tables, it will dump those tables in separate packages. The larger tables will be put in separate packages so that it gets optimized. Okay, then number of tables to be extracted, that is how many tables we want to extract. Okay, then the option that is extract table with size more than limit. Okay, so what it will do is that it will extract the tables which is more than the limit what we will specify here. You can see at the below column we have specified the table size limit. Okay, then split packages with size more than limit. Okay, then we have specified if anything is more than this size, just split them. Okay, and in if we have splitted the tables in the export preparation phase, we can specify, okay, yes, we have split it and here is the file which contains that information. So in our case, we have not done the splitting, so we have not selected that option. Okay, so let's go to the next thing is talking about the actual export parameters. That is, here you can specify the unload settings, that is Unicode target system. Okay, target hardware. So just take note that what is a big Indian and little Indian. So it's extremely important that you get this definition also right depending on the type of the hardware. Okay, then number of parallel jobs. This is very important because this will increase the load on the system. So this will govern that how much load this system can take. Basically how many CPUs and how much memory you have in the system. Accordingly, you specify this value. So as a thumb rule, what we do is normally say for example, you have say, six CPU, we just multiply that value by two and minus one. So it is 12 minus one, 11. Okay, so that is one of the thumb rule so that you have 11 processes being de dedicated for performing an export and one process is just doing the rest of the operating system related work. Okay, then after that here you can see some of the advanced options are available here. Advanced options, you can see that the parallel export import that is export and import will run in parallel. What this means is that you have created the target database using migration monitor. Okay, once the target database is ready, you will export first package. It will be transferred to the target system and the import will start immediately for that particular table. Okay, but take note that this is depending on the shared location or the FTP location where the source can write it and target can pick up them. Okay, then define package unload order. So here we can specify the package unload order that is how we need it uh, sequential manner or unsorted manner or table size, whatever the format we need. Okay, then next is the unsorted unload. That is, if you are sorting them and done doing the unload, basically it will take more time to sort it and then unload this those tables. So it's recommended that just do perform it unsorted. Okay, here we have selected the advanced configuration option. Okay, so let's see what all the advanced configuration options are. Okay, here it's you can see that unload option stop on error. Okay, so that is one advanced option. 
basically you can modify those values okay now the next thing here is about the update statistics okay just make sure that you have run this update statistics very close to you are performing an export because this takes a lot of time it takes about two hours or so so if you perform this activity during an export preparation phase you can avoid these two hours of the export preparation time during actual export when the system is down so just take note of it okay now this is the summary so in the summary you can see that whatever things we have specified so far is reflected here okay we just need to pick up them and start the export okay now in the next step here you have seen the summary okay if we want to modify any of the parameter we just click on say instead of next we just click on select that and click on revise okay so on revising it will give you the option to change those values okay now if we click on next it will take us to the actual execution phase Okay, in execution phase, here you can see that what is happening in the execution phase. Okay, so once the execution phase is complete, just take note of the time how much it takes for the actual export completion because that is very important. And when you are working on a project, you export the first system then second system third system so your role should be your objective should be to keep on optimizing the downtime keep on optimizing the export time so you need to take note of the values that is how much time it is taking to perform an export first time first system what is the size and which parameters you are using so that you can tune those parameters Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular training session. Thank you for joining and have a nice day. Bye-bye.